Hey guys, today we're going to take the ideas about molds that we learned in the previous video and learn some of the variety of its applications in chemistry in general. So today we're going to look at molar conversions, which is uh, kind of important in chemistry when you're dealing, dealing with the molar concept. So we're going to start by looking at three types of conversions. These are the main conversions that you'll probably see in chemistry. These are molds to mass molds to number of particles in the molecule, and molds to volume, and that's assuming that the subject that we're looking at is a gas. Okay, so let's start with molds to grams. So to get from moles to grams, we have to multiply the moles by the molar mass. The molar mass is the mass of one mole which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, as we learned in the previous video. And the molar mass is the mass of one mole of a compound or element. So if we look over here at this uh, little snippet of a periodic table, we can see that this right here, that is a molar mass of carbon. So that's what we're going to be using. And yet it does have two meanings. One of them is the mass in grams of one mole, the other is the mass in AMU of one atom. We're just going to be looking at this. Don't worry about this. I'm just telling you that it has two different meanings over here. So, how exactly do we find the moles in the formula? Uh, unless they give it, of course. But you find the moles in the formula by looking at the coefficients. These coefficients tell you how many moles of this formula there are. So remember that this tells you the moles. And if there is no number there, it's assumed to be 1, as we'll look at later. And of course, you might get lucky and they'll just give you the moles directly, but it's good to know how to find the moles in the formula. So let's look at... C6H12O6. So we, there's no number initially, but we can draw an imaginary one because it's naturally assumed to have a one there if no number is there. So that means that there's one mole of C6H12O6. Now to find the molar mass, we need to multiply the number of atoms of each element times its respective molar mass. So the molar mass of carbon, we can find it right here, is 12.011. So we can say 6 times 12.011, and we can find the molar mass for just carbon. So that's that section of the formula. Now we can also look at hydrogen and say that we have 12 atoms of hydrogen. So we need to multiply 12 times this right here and this is a bit more precise than I wanted it to be but in general the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.008 that's important to know and so we can say 12 times 1.008 is equal to 12.096 then we do the for the last element we do the remaining and that's 6 times 15.999 this is 15.999 coming from right here. Might be a little bit hard to see. Maybe I can extend it a bit. So that's where this comes from. And you can see that that gets us 95.994. Now once we get each respective molar mass, you want to add them up to find the molar mass of the entire mole. And say you do have a number two or three here you'll only be looking at these numbers when multiplying because that's the molar mass when mol the mo molar mass is the mass of one mole so even if there's even if there was a two you'd still complete it like this so once we add up all these masses together we found that we find out that it's 180.156 grams right now so again, we go back to our formula and we can see that 
moles times molar mass is equal to grams. So we have one mole, because the imaginary one, times 180.156 grams. Uh, this is the molar mass, which we got from here, adding all three of these together. And one mole times that is just the molar mass again, which is 180.156 grams. So that's how we find that. Now say we did have a two coefficient, which represented two moles of C6H12O6. So in this case, we'd, we followed through just like we did before. Let's find the six times its molar mass, the hydrogen times its molar mass, oxygen times its molar mass. We're gonna add them up together because right now we're just looking at molar mass, which is the mass of one mole, not two moles, okay? So once we get this, now we're going to apply it in our equation, our formula here. So moles times molar mass is equal to grams. This time, this time we have two moles. So two moles times our molar mass is equal to 360.312 grams. So this is the answer uh, of the grams in this formula right here. Now, of course, uh, you can always go back backwards. Say that you're given the grams. All you have to do is divide it, use alge algebra, divide the grams, and yes, you divide the grams by the molar mass to get the moles. So that's how that would work. You, these are these go back and forth. If this times this equals this, then this divided by this will equal this. Okay, so let's look at an, another conversion, and this is uh, moles to number of particles. So in this formula, we multiply moles times Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. This gets us the number of particles or atoms or molecules depends on the scenario. Just say, we're just gonna call it number of particles for now. And yes, this is one of the easiest conversions. So take this formula here that we had above, two moles of C6H12O6. All we have to do is multiply the moles, which is two. Here, let's draw that. Multiply the moles by Avogadro's number, so that's two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power, and we get 1.204 times 10 to the 24th particles that are in this formula. And you have to remember that no matter what the formula is after the coefficient, after this coefficient, no matter what this is, it'll always follow this rule. So all we did was multiply the moles, which got here, times Avogadro's number, which is right here, and we get the particles. So that's a pretty easy conversion. Let's look at the last conversion now. And this is from moles to volume. So this, this specific uh, conversion only works if we're dealing with a gas and we're assuming that it's at STP. It's something you'll learn later. It stands for standard pressure and temperature. Just don't worry about it. Just we're either going to assume that it's SGP or it's going to give it to us. So usually they won't say SGP when you're learning this at, uh, at the beginning in chemistry. You'll get into it later, but just you're just supposed to assume that it's STP. Okay, so let's say that we're given three moles of carbon dioxide, which is a gas, so we can use this. So we have three moles of carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and we're assuming that it's at STP. So we're given that it's at STP. So all we have to do, the formula says, multiply the moles times 22.4. This will get us the volume in liters. <clears throat> Again, this is only for dealing with the gas at STP. So we're given the moles right here. The moles are is three times 22.4. 22.4 and that's going to give us 67.2 and remember the volume answer is going to be in liters 
So we know that 3 moles of carbon dioxide at STP is around 67.2 liters in volume. So this is another easy conversion. Um, you can always go backwards as well. If you're given the volume, you can just divide by 22.4 to get the moles. Same thing up here. If you're given the particles, you can divide by Avogadro's number to get the moles. It's just simple algebra over there. So here's a little chart to represent what we just learned. You can maybe pause the video and take notes. Of course, to get from moles to particles, multiply by Avogadro's number. To get back to moles from particles, you divide by Avogadro's number. To get from moles to mass, we're going to uh, multiply by molar mass. To get from mass to moles, we're going to divide by molar mass. And then finally, to get from moles to volume, remember this is of a gas at STP. Uh, we're going to multiply by 22.4. Going from volume to moles, it'll be dividing by 22.4. So uh, these three are some of the most important and basic conversions that you'll learn in chemistry. And I hope you learned a lot in this video. Thank you.